Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to me. Brothers, when I was a child, I used to really be amazed at the story of Jesus walking on water. Man, I thought that was amazing. I always wonder uh, how was that possible? And, you know, the older I got, I started hearing and, and reading mixed things about uh, the act or, or the concept of him walking on water. Some say it was in actuality. Some say it was symbolism. Um, scientists uh, tend to believe that it was symbolism and he was actually floating on a sheet of ice, a sheet of thin ice. So it appeared he was walking on water. Some believe he actually did walk on water. Um, we're going to lean towards it was symbolism. He was trying to show the disciples something. You know, the sea is seen as the sea, S E A, is seen as a uh, chaotic element of nature and something to be feared. A lot of people fear water, they fear the ocean, they, they fear bodies of water, large bodies of water, uh, an element of nature, which can be chaotic. And so what Jesus was showing the disciples was, man, you calm the chaotic element of nature or life. Never panic. Put all your trust in God, the God in you. That's who you put your trust in and you can calm any chaotic element of life or nature. You know, and, and the disciples, they didn't get it, you know. Uh, but that's where you got to have faith of the unseen. You got to have faith in you and knowing what you're capable of doing. You know, years ago, man, this had to be, wow. This had to be close to 30 years ago. No, not that long. Uh, maybe maybe 25 years ago. I had befriended this, this guy, man, uh, through a couple other friends. And uh, this guy's name was Bebe. Now, I hadn't seen Bebe in years, man. He was, he was, uh, he was a rough character, rough character, uh, a person we would call hood, a person we would call street. I mean, that's all he knew. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that was him. You speak of baby, he was a street cat. Uh, and I was never a street cat. I did street activities, but I never considered myself a street cat. You know, I, I like to look nice. I like to dress nice. I like to talk well. Um, uh, I don't like drama. So, you know, um, I never ever considered myself a street cat, but I did have a few associates, a few friends who were street cats. And for whatever reason, uh, you know, we got along, man. We we vibed. You know, I had a lot of friends back in the day who were street cats and we just vibed. And uh people would wonder, now how did you two guys connect? You know, because it looked weird uh from what they saw of me. And what they saw of that person, but we connected on a different level, a, a level beyond the surface. And uh, I've always tried to deal with people like that beyond the surface, right? Uh, so I saw something in Bebe that others didn't see, and he saw something in me that that others didn't see. And so you know we connected on that man, became very very tight. Uh, at the time, I was renting out a duplex, and Baby came through to visit me, and uh, it was in his his one of his stumping grounds where the duplex was. But he came over to, to visit me, and we wanted to go to the store. And the store is maybe a few blocks away. I was going to get him in the car. He was like, "Man, don't, don't drive. We, we just walk over." So we started walking a few blocks, uh, headed towards the store, and as we're walking. On one particular street, there's this car that, that looks like it's, it's abandoned or just out of service. And as we're passing this car, walking towards our destination, a dog, a stray dog just runs from under the car towards us. I mean, just out of nowhere. My first thought was to take off and run. Now, I'm not, I don't have a fear of dogs typically. But man, I, I didn't know this dog. He just shoots from under the car. I didn't know what to expect, right? That was my first thought. And so I kind of made a motion to take off, right? 
And they be kind of held me back with one arm. He held me back with one arm. And with his other arm, he put it uh, towards the dog as if he was going to hit the dog. He didn't hit the dog, but he made a motion towards the dog as he was going to hit it with his arm. And so the dog stopped in his tracks and went back under the car. And uh, and we proceeded to, to go towards the store. And I was like, man, how'd you know, you know that dog wouldn't attack? How'd you know that? And he said, man, I did that because most dogs that are strays and most dogs that would uh, sleep on the cars or hide on the cars have been hit before. And so when I did the motion as if I was going to hit it, he went back into his muscle memory. He remembered getting hit and he wanted no parts of that. So he retreated and went back under the car. I was like, wow, wow. That's, that's really paying attention to the environment of not just you, but of the animals and, and and just how things work, right? And just just uh putting all that in your, your Rolodex, your mental Rolodex. So so now today I was thinking about that and I was like, wow. In a sense, Bebe was walking on water. He was taking a chaotic situation, a chaotic element of life or nature, and making it calm. He took control of it. Now, this brother had to have faith in the unknown, although he knew the history of many other dogs in that situation. He did not know that dog. So he definitely had to have faith that this motion he gestured would, would uh, or exercise would work. Or if not, he would have gotten bitten. That's walking on water. That's definitely symbolism, but it is walking on water. It's calming a chaotic situation and stepping out on faith. And brothers, that's what it's going to take for you to get to the next level. You have to know what's inside of you. You have to know it's going to work. You have to calm any chaotic situation with faith. Now, the most chaotic situation ever is going to be inside of you. Now, there's going to be things outside of you that happen and, and, you know, but the what but the most chaotic situation is going to be the disruption inside of you, your mind, you know, your spirit, your heart is going to be in turmoil, and your your self esteem is going to play with play with you. You know, you're going to have these thoughts, self defeating thoughts, that you can't reach the next level, that you're not worthy, that you don't deserve it, that it's too hard. But man, you got to step out on faith. And calm that chaotic, that chaotic situation. You know, you can do it. And this is what I, I know Jesus was trying to show the disciples. But uh, although, you know, he led them in a sense to water, he could not make them drink it. You know, every man must carry his own cross. And so I can't do it for you. No one can do it for you. You can't do it for anyone else. Every man has to carry his own cross, has to step out on faith and, and uh, exercise his, his own ability to exercise and, and capitalize and monetize off of, you know, his own God-given gifts and talents. But I know we all can do it, but it's going to take just one step, stepping forward on faith and knowing, hey, man, I'm worthy, it's in me. Trust me, brothers, it's all worth it. For me to you, always love. Peace.